Hello, I'm Tina. Uh, in this video, we will talk about servlet, but not all of them, okay? Uh, because servlet also have a life cycle, and uh, we will talk about in another uh, video. Uh, this one just explain what is a servlet, okay? Uh, let's go to our uh, IDE so we can we can see okay so what is a servlet here we have our first very simple servlet so what is a servlet from the Wikipedia the uh, what thing the explanation is a servlet is just a Java software component that used to extend the ability of web server because web server like as we explained before can only to respond or host those static content and for a web application um, we we there are lots of things which can not only be static we uh we need to have some dynamic content to be hosted on the web right uh, on the server which can respond different content based on different uh, users requests okay and uh, that is a servlet which is added or being hosted on the web server to extend their ability to add the dynamic feature. Okay, and uh, that's that part. And as from the Java side, what kind of, what is a, a servlet? A servlet, you can think is just a Java class, a normal Java class, see here? This is a servlet, right? And how do you become a servlet? We just using class to find have a class name. But a servlet have something special, which is to be a servlet. This Java class are required to extend HTTP servlet. If we have a servlet to do like this, okay. We have this hello servlet. It's a normal class. And it have a duplicate method. It does. It's not a servlet because a servlet must extend HTTP servlet. Then it cannot become a servlet. Okay. And in the uh, in the servlet, you can have lots of the methods you can override, like a duplicate, do post, do put, do delete. But as a classic web application. Normally, you only override two do two methods here. Uh, two uh, kind of do something methods here. One is do get. The other one is uh, do post. The reason for that is, uh, in the browser, when we have a form, the form can only submit two types of the request. One is a get. One is uh, the post. It cannot submit others, but uh, if we build build a restful application, we can use in Postman and other tools. Then you can have the request the type is the put, delete options and others. But with the form, okay, HTML form, you understand, right? The method that place can only be two values: get or post. Uh, uh, what I mean is here. Uh, let me open an, a new page. Okay. What I mean is in HTML. Oh, sorry, sorry. In HTML, we can have a form to submit a form, right? And here we have action, and we can have a method to decide what kind of HTTP request method we are using. Here, only two value: get or post. That's why in our servlet, okay, we only 
normally for this tutorial okay for this tutorial we only override two methods one is do get and two the other one is do post that's the two methods we will override to handle the request one is get and one is post but there are other methods you will see later which can be override here like init and destroy okay so uh summarize okay a servlet you can think is just a class a normal java class but it must extend http servlet okay and uh, in the uh, 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 in the servlet you normally override two uh, do methods one is a get and one is a post okay um here actually uh, if you some people has experience probably heard about the uh, terminology like ioc this is a part of the ioc because from but this ioc is not that flexible um let's take a look at uh, the <coughs> let's take a look at what's the uh, this is the entire project from the project do you see in order to call do get and do post at least they are not the static method right at least we have to have what we have to have an instance of hello world servlet right and do you see anywhere in this project we create hello world servlet didn't right and guess who is create that tomcat okay and this is one kind of behavior of the ioc okay and uh, this ioc is not as flexible as a spring because uh, for spring it you for spring if we want to ask uh, we uh, we want to have the object being created by spring there's no special like requirements like it must extend uh, some uh, class or implement some interface you just do the an annotation but for a uh, servlet, which is all the technology, and at that time it uh, kind of like kept it. Now you must extend HTTP servlet and uh, to be recognized by Tomcat to recognize it as a servlet. Okay. And uh, one more thing I want to talk about in this video is follow the last video we mentioned about web.xml. And here we configure servlet okay a servlet will have three names okay suppose here if we just have a servlet here and do nothing then the project won't work it doesn't work anymore because the tomcat don't know how to initialize or how to um, map uh, how to create a mapping between the url and our servlet it doesn't work. Uh, let me uh, edit the configuration. Go here. And I'm using another browser. Okay, sorry. This works because of welcome, right? Because of welcome, welcome file. Suppose we want previous, we have a hello, hello works. Now, if I want to go to hello, doesn't work anymore because we don't we didn't config and uh, uh, the first way to config a servlet is in the web.xml file and in the web.xml file a servlet has uh, three names okay let me copy and put it in one note and to explain uh, three names of a servlet Okay, let me drag it to make it larger. Can I make it larger? You. Okay, do like this. A servlet have three names. Let me explain. First, this name. This name. And this name. Is called the internal name. internal name and uh, they have they have to be exactly the same between this among these two tags okay 
and uh, they must be the same, exactly the same. Otherwise, that doesn't work. Okay, these two names have to be used because these two names are used behind the thing based on for the URL to find the class to handle this request. And the URL pattern, this name, and you can say uh, user used name. You the used, okay, and you can say URL pattern name. I kind of like forgot the okay it's being user used which means what which means it's we as a client which use this application gonna use this name what does it mean which means uh, uh, in the browser what you can do is HTTP like a local host and 8080 and the web content and here you can using hello to access or in the form and here we have action right and here we have action in this action you can use this name hello and here you can using a method okay we only override the get you can using get or post and if you're using get, it's gonna go to do get method, your request. If you're using post, it's gonna go to uh, do post, handled by do post. And for the URL in the URL bar, it's gonna be get. The browser will be uh, initialized a get request. And so when you call this one, it will be handled by do get method in the servlet class. And this class is the Java class name. And uh, this name is actually is just a, a, server, a, a full name of a servlet, which means a uh, including the package and the servlet name. Okay, and why do we do that? For security reason, because uh, when we handle like this way, the user will call hello, but then we will never know uh on the container which actual class is actually handle this request okay uh that's it uh, for this video i think i explain most of the thing i explain the things i want to explain in this video okay and this is xml configuration and uh, later on i will show you if we're using annotation how to configure them Thank you and bye-bye. Uh,